Number 11 on a cross-country flight plan is to calculate our ground speed and wind correction angle using our flight computer. This is also known as an E6B. It's also known as a whiz wheel. I guess we call it a whiz wheel when you get really fast at it, but we're going to refer to it as an E6B today. So how we use this is by following the directions at the top. And this allows us to calculate out both our wind correction angle and our ground speed. It says first, set wind direction under our true index. Now we're going to calculate out our climb. So for our climb, we said the winds were coming out of 230 at 15. So for the climb portion, the wind direction was 230. The velocity we were using was uh, actually, it was 13, sorry. Okay. And then the temperature is going to be changing throughout our climb, so we're not going to put anything there. So for the climb portion, it says set wind direction under true index. Now, it's best if you start with the center grommet always at 100. Just do that every time, and it helps you avoid some confusion on down the road. When we put the center grommet on 100, we're considering that to be zero, like a starting point, and then we can count up from there, 10, 20, 30, and so on. So the first thing we're going to do is put the center grommet on 100, and then it says set wind direction under true index. True index is at the top of our wheel here, and the wind direction was 230. So we place 230 there. And then it says mark your wind velocity up from the center point. So you need a pencil, don't write in pen, or you'll not be using your E6B very long as you're going to have too many marks on it. So from the center, we need to find 13 up. So we said this is 10, and that's 20, so 13 is going to be right about here. We just make a small mark. You can make an X or a dot, whatever you like. Then step number three it says to set true course under true index. Remember when we found our true course, it was 133. So now we just simply spin the wheel until 133 reads under the true index. Step four is a common step that people make errors with. So read it closely. It says, slide the wind velocity mark, that means the mark you made with your pencil, slide the wind velocity mark to your true airspeed. Remember we wrote down 80 was our true airspeed for the climb, so we have to move the pencil mark to 80. So if I move this down to 80, then two bits of information are revealed. Number five says our ground speed reads under the center. So our ground speed ends up being 80 also because basically we have a direct crosswind. So we can put our ground speed on our navigation log for the, cruise, or for the climb portion as 80. The second bit of information that was revealed to us is number six. Wind correction angle reads between the center line and the wind velocity mark. That's the mark you made with your pencil. So if you look at the center line, and then you go over here to the next bold line, you see 10, 20, 30. So it appears that it's about nine to the right. Well, what do I do with nine right? I look up here at their little formula, and it tells me that I should add it if it's to the right. So up here, my wind correction angle should be plus 8. And then my new answer, which is my magnetic heading, goes right here. So my magnetic heading will be 148. So this is a lot of numbers, and what we're actually doing here is we're trying to fly, like we said, from Greenville, from Greenville down to Columbia. So first, we found our true course. Like, what is our course across the ground in relation to the true North Pole? Then we converted that to magnetic by taking in consideration this isogonic line. It told us to add seven degrees. 
because we fly with a magnetic compass, so therefore we need a magnetic course or a magnetic heading. The next thing we had to do was consider the wind. If we're flying this way and the wind is coming from here, it's going to be a direct crosswind off our right wing, so we will have to angle the airplane into the wind a little bit and fly a heading of 148 to track over the ground on the line that we drew. Now we need to do the same thing, but it will be for our cruise. So I'm going to erase the pencil mark that I made and we'll start over again with number one. So number one said set wind direction under the true index. And remember we had written the wind down from the weather briefer. The winds aloft at our altitude were around 280 at 20. So we can fill that in. 280 at 20. And the temperature that the weather briefer gave us was plus 14 degrees Celsius. So number one says set wind direction under true index. The wind direction is 280. Number two says mark wind velocity up from the center. Remember we always start at 100. The center grommet starts at 100, and that makes it easy for us to count. 10, 20. So we put our wind mark 20 degrees up. Number three says set true course under true index. Well, our true course is going to remain the same for the whole flight, hopefully, because we're just flying a direct line there. So the true course is still 130. So I spin this around to 130. Correction, 133. Sorry about that. So 133. Number four says slide the wind velocity mark, that's the pencil mark you made, to true airspeed. Our true airspeed for the cruise portion was 105. Remember we pulled this number off the cruise performance chart out of the POH. So we're going to slide our pencil mark now up to 105. Okay. With the pencil mark, this is 100, 110, and so on. So 105 is going to be halfway between these two. And now two bits of information are revealed. Number five says your ground speed reads under the center. Hey, look, we're going about 120. Ground speed column is here, so we can write 1, 2, 0. Now how did we get to go so fast? Well, we're going to have a true airspeed of 105 because the air is thinner, plus we have 20 knots of wind that's coming off our right rear that's going to help push us through the air. The other bit of information we need to pull off of our E6B is the wind correction angle. Number six says wind correction angle reads between the center line and your wind velocity mark, which is the mark you made with your pencil. Again, we see 10, 20. So if we look, this is 2, 4, 6. So it looks like we're 6 to the right. And if I forget to add or subtract, I look up here at my little formula, and it tells me that if it's to the right, I should add it. So down here, the true course was the same, 1, 3, 3. The variance is the same, plus 7. So my answer here is still 140. This time my wind correction angle is plus 6. So my magnetic heading for the cruise portion should be 146. So we started out with 148, but as we climb higher and higher, we're going to end up flying a heading of about 146. Now do keep in mind that all these winds are forecasted, not actual. So if you're flying along at 146 heading and you notice that you keep continually being off course a little bit, you're more than welcome to adjust to a heading that will work better for your flight. But for now, this is our forecasted uh, heading that we intend on using at least to get started.